Paola Igonu is a force to be reckoned with. The 24-year-old Italian volleyball player holds the women's world record spike speed, highest jump and fastest serve. She was also a flag bearer at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and is a three-time winner of volleyball's top European club competition. After a trophy-filled season playing in Turkey, she is now back in Italy with the Milan-based team Biro Volley. Igonu was born and raised in Italy, but as the daughter of Nigerian immigrants, she has found herself at the center of a charged debate on identity and race. With her Italian nationality being repeatedly called into question, in 2022, Igonu announced that she was taking a break from the national team. Normally, I would suck it up and be like, hey, you're strong, and when you're home, like, you can let it out. But in that moment, I couldn't. Igonu does not shy away from using her platform to call out racism and gender inequality hoping the next generation won't have to go through what she did. I won't allow anyone that doesn't know how it is to wake up every day and fight for something you truly believe to take that dream away from me. Now, as she enters a new chapter back in Italy and with a new team, is she hopeful for change? Welcome to Generation Sport. I'm Iman Amrani and I've come to Milan to speak to star volleyball spiker Paola Egoni. I've come to speak to her about her journey as an athlete, how she intends to use her voice, and what she envisions for the future. So, Paola, you've just come back from playing in Turkey, and these are some of the courts you first ever played on as a young player. How would your younger self feel if she could see what you have achieved since then? So first of all, I'm really excited to be back here. And I think she would feel proud and she would take every battle with a light heart. Like everything is going to be okay. What are you most proud of? Um, all that I did achieve and all that I learned through the losses. Why the losses rather than the wins? Because when you win, you're happy, you forget about everything. You're just thinking about the last ball, the last action, and you're smiling and, you know. But especially when we lose, it's when we sit down, we reflect, and we all think, what could I have done better to help the team and to perform better? And what little things do I need to change to be ready for the next match? You have this character that draws people in. You have a lot of young female fans who follow you, mm -hmm. and that's opened doors beyond volleyball. What kind of things have you been able to do that you wouldn't have been able to do before? Well, I would say everything. Being sponsored by Emporio Armani, getting to know a lot of people that are inspiring, and also the possibility to see how children and other people are like loving what I'm doing in the court. And you were playing last season in Turkey yes. and you won the league, well, you won the Champions League yes. of volleyball over there. Yes. So you were also named MVP, best player. Yes. Does it feel like a lot of pressure being one of the best players in the world? Um, I mean, I don't feel it as a pressure. It's more like that's my goal. So when I get there, I'm happy, but then I'm connected. I'm like, hey, like, what's the next step? And when you think about life beyond after you've finished playing volleyball, what kind of things do you think you want to do? I would love to be on the fashion world and keep speaking up for what I believe. So Paola, thank you so much for coming to speak with me today. Thank you. I'm honored to be here and thank you for giving me the possibility. So volleyball is one of the most popular team sports in the world, mm -hmm. but it doesn't enjoy exactly the same profile as football or basketball, yes. for example, at the moment. True. How would you explain to our viewers who maybe aren't familiar with the sport, what the culture around volleyball is like and why you initially wanted to pursue that sport? Um, so it's a sport that is growing. Uh, in the last couple of years with the national team and then the Italian league, 
we have achieved a lot of things and I feel a lot of children are like more interested and wanting to try it and it's not just the typical okay I want to play soccer and football and so we are creating awareness and I love it I'm so proud of being part of this community and to make children dream and when you think about the future of volleyball what do you want to see in terms of its development how do you want to see things go in the future so what I would love to see is the equality, um, women and men. I would love for it to be at the same level. I feel that as soon as a lady team loses, like they're more attacked. And I mean, this is sport, you win and you lose, like it's normal. So I would love for our community to protect us. And I want to talk to you a bit about your background. You have such an interesting story that's really kind of led you into the sport. Your parents moved to Italy yes. from Nigeria yes. and you were born in Italy. Yes. But you didn't receive citizenship until you were 14. Yes. How did that make you feel growing up in Italy? So at the beginning, I didn't even think about that. Like, you know, you're, you're a child. You're just happy to be here. I mean, since I was little, I would travel back home to Nigeria and um, I loved it. The people, the culture and just the mentality. But of course, I was grateful for what I had in Italy growing up, the school and how easily things would come. But I feel that there are some little things that I would love to change for my own children. The most important thing is the teachers, okay. I would say. It's the teacher goal to make children grow with open mind and not being the one pointing out the difference between little children. Did you have examples of feeling kind of singled out by your teachers? Uh, yes. It's something I never talked about. Um, so I was in kindergarten and I was having fun playing with this child and we were just sitting on the garden and pulling out the grass, laughing, having fun. And the teacher came and wasn't happy about what we were doing, but she decided to put just me on the tension. And I didn't understand, so I was like, okay, whatever, I'm just going to sit here and you're a child, like you're, well, and I remember I had to go to the toilet. So I went to my teacher and I was like, hey, teacher, I need to go to the toilet. And she's like, no, you can't. And I repeated this three times. And then I couldn't keep it anymore. So I ran to the toilet, but I couldn't make it on time. And I eventually ended up doing everything on myself. And in that moment, the teacher came and laughed at me and I said, oh my God, you smell so bad black people smell and she never cleaned me. She waited for my mom to come. And when we get home, my mom and I sat down and we had a conversation where she explained to me in a protective way. She's like, hey, you always need to be the best, always clean, behave well, the way you talk. You need to be perfect because they are going to come at you. So growing up, I had this thing where still now, I mean, I'm hypersensitive, but I'm working and healing this part. Um, but it wasn't nice, let's say. So that is a very vulnerable thing to discuss. What makes you want to talk about that now? Because I realize, um, I can be the voice of my community and any person that feel represented by me. So it's important for me to share this little episode because I want them to know that I know what they're going through and we have the choice to choose which path to take. Yes. A pivotal moment in Paolo Egoni's journey to the top of professional volleyball was joining Milan's Club Italia Academy. 
Created by the Italian Volleyball Federation as a way to strengthen the national team, Club Italia offers promising teenagers a combination of intense training, school education, and crucially, the chance to compete against professional teams. Marco Mencarelli, head coach of the women's team, explains how it works. Eh, la squadra del progetto Club Italia è una squadra che noi eh, facciamo partecipare ai vari campionati che compresi tra la B1 e la A1 a seconda delle esigenze di sviluppo tecnico ha dimostrato negli anni di avere grande efficacia perché eh, gran parte delle giocatrici di altissimo livello che fanno parte della nostra squadra seniores e di molte squadre di Serie A1 del nostro campionato provengono appunto da questo progetto. Egonu is arguably Club Italia's most renowned graduate so far, one that the new generation looks to as an inspiration. Paolo Egonu è una giocatrice che è un punto di riferimento per molte atlete, sia in Italia che fuori, anche per tutti i risultati che ha ottenuto nonostante la sua giovane età. Sono molto felice di poter dire che sto magari facendo anche un po' il percorso che ha fatto lei passando dal Club Italia e tutto, e magari anche un giorno sperare di diventare una giocatrice forte come lei, ovviamente. So when you were 15, you left your family home in Cittadella to go and join Club Italia. Can you explain what that experience was like for you, leaving mm -hmm. home at such a young age to go and pursue that? It was an amazing experience. It was hard because I left home when I was 13. So your comfort zone, your family is not next to you. But then that's when you grow that you can meet people and make them become your new family. So that's where all my character developed and I'm really grateful because they really had the patience to give me time to work because I was really skinny and I had to work on my muscle structure. So the first two years that's what they put me on and their goal was make me be stable to make sure I wouldn't get injured. And then the three years after I started to play more volleyball and like with experience I improved. So you've spoken about the support that you've had from your mother and the way she, I guess, gave you advice to navigate those challenges that you might face. And then being all the way in another city, away from your family, did you struggle with that? Did you find it hard being away from that support network? Yes, it was hard. It was hard because I was a baby and, you know, the first person you run to is your mom. So. It was hard finding your new support, but then I found it. The girls, they were really like welcoming. It was amazing. At the time I was the youngest, so I had the possibility to grow with all the athletes and volleyball player. It was nice. Yes. And it's interesting that you say you're the youngest because I noticed that you're the eldest in your family, the eldest sister. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask what that experience was like being the eldest sister, having to navigate all of these things, mm -hmm. being the first one. Mm -hmm. Did you find that hard, not having an older sibling to be able to tell you um, how to navigate? My mom and my dad worked hard. They would wake up early in the morning and they would be like, hey, you need to dress your sister, dress your brother, you need to make sure they eat, they have breakfast, and then you're going to take them to school, and then you go to your school. So they gave me that sense of responsibility towards others. It's interesting that you then moved on to go to Club Italia, and you were the youngest, yes. so it's a completely different role yes, to play. it was a different, also because I have a strong character, so like there were times where I had to bite my tongue and be like, Paul, you're the youngest, like, keep it low. But the thing that motivated me was I'm going to make sure my sister and my brother never lack anything. And till now, this is my goal. Whatever they need, whatever they dream about, I want to be able to help them fulfill their dreams. What kind of things does that look like then when you're thinking about them? Is it more of a material thing? Is it about mentality and support? Um, I feel more mentality and support. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I'm able to give them what they need and they can dream big. Where does that come from, that dreaming big? Is it volleyball that has given you that, or is it the it's, background, or...? It's my family. Yeah? I mean, my dad was the elder brother, and he moved from Nigeria to Europe all alone because the only thing he thought about was his family. 
I'm going to do all I can to make my brothers and sister and my parents never suffer again. So I feel it's a little bit in my DNA and also the way my parents brought me up with the values. I just feel it inside, yes. Many athletes in Europe who are black or minority have certain scrutiny on their identity that others don't have. That scrutiny that you face led to you in 2022 wanting to take a step back from the national team of Italy. What was it exactly that led to you wanting to make that decision? So we were playing um, the World Championship tournament mm -hmm. and we lost the semi-final against Brazil that did an amazing game. Like, you, we couldn't do anything about that. They've done it! And Brazil are through to the final! We were really disappointed because we really wanted that. So I was really vulnerable in that period. So when I do things, I do them with all my heart and I put all my effort, all my energy goes there. And I wasn't satisfied for how I performed, especially for how I practiced. So I was really vulnerable for that. I wasn't happy. I wasn't um, proud of what I did. And then all the criticisms start. So it came through the social media. Okay. Yes. And, you know, it's not that I was searching for it, you know, like, okay, I'm just going to watch a movie or I'm just going to be on Instagram and see what's going on. And that's how I saw it. Like I wasn't searching for it. And that hurt me because, you know, when you're vulnerable, like you doubt yourself reading those things and um, hearing them made me doubt myself more. And the worst one was, is she Italian? I really don't know how it got to that point. I just know I was devastated. Like when we played the final, third and fourth place, I remember singing the national anthem and I was crying. I was hurt. But I still wanted to be there because a medal is a medal. And after the game, I was so tired. Mentally, physically, I was trained. So I actually never expected this was going to come out. Um, I was just like crying to my manager and someone record the video and it was... <sighs> it went, like it got shared a lot, viral. a lot of yes. people, it went viral, yes. okay. And what were people saying when it went viral? So the first thing they did was like interview me and they're like, hey, so is it true what you say? So at that point I had to say yes, like right now, I want to take a step back and think about me as a person. Because if I did it, I wasn't going to be true to myself. It's amazing, though, that you say that because very often you meet athletes who are at the top of the game and the pressure is, you know, you're in your early 20s, you have to just fight, you've got this place. So how do you align those two things, that thing of being the best and also looking after yourself and making sure that you're truthful to, your, to yourself and what's best for you? So it was the first time it happened to me because... Normally I would suck it up and be like, hey, you're strong and when you're home, like you can let it out. But in that moment, I couldn't. I'm pretty sure that was the first time they saw me so vulnerable in front of everyone. And do you think that they respected that vulnerability or not? They didn't understand it. They didn't understand where it was coming from. They didn't understand that in that moment, I wasn't the athlete, I was a girl that was hurt, that was tired, and that was crying. They saw it as I was just being spoiled and I was just acting up. I just wanted attention. And that's what hurt me the most because yes, I'm an athlete, yes, I'm strong, but I'm a person and I have my own emotions. And even if I don't show you, this maybe is the reason why I don't show you my emotions, because when I do open up, you never sit down, think, and be like, wow, this is what she's going through. 
but you've now, I guess, taken that time and reflected. How are you feeling now that you have taken that step back? So I had the possibility to go play in Turkey mm -hmm. at Bakken Bank. And after the World Championship, I was so happy. I was, wow, I'm not going to know anything from what's going on in the Italian league, what they're saying about me. Like, I don't want to know anything. I'm blocking that side. And I remember getting there and they welcomed me so good, like as a person. So I had time to heal and I got to meet amazing players and I took my time. And I remember one morning I woke up and I was like, well, I feel good now. I realized that sport is sport, you win and you lose. and you're the strongest when, no matter what comes to you, you take it and you get up and you keep going because you want to be the best. I know what I go through. I know the suffer. I know the sacrifices and it's amazing. And I won't allow anyone that doesn't know how it is to wake up every day and fight for something you truly believe to take that dream away from me. To go back to the point that you made you want to leave in the first place, a lot of female athletes, a lot of athletes who are from black and ethnic minority backgrounds, they do face a lot of scrutiny in the media yes. and there's so much pressure. You see other players around the world yeah. really struggling. Yes. How can you protect women from reaching a breaking point of having to take a step back at such a key point in their career? I feel we should create our own little community. So we should all join together because at the end we're going through the same things but i feel like there is always this shyness in reaching out and making that step but this is my dream because when you have your girls mm -hmm. right next to you and you're going through something they're going to speak up for you if you were to choose other female athletes that you've seen who've overcome the challenges that female athletes face who would you want to have on your team in your corner I would love to have Serena Williams. Serena Williams? Yes. Why? What is about her specifically? I just love the way she was an athlete, but she made it so important that she was still a woman. What do you mean? how hard it is to be a woman. Like, you're young and you want to play sport, you're ambitious and you keep working for it, but then in one moment inside you, you have this little light and you're like, I want to be a mom. I want to create my own family. I want to have my stability. And you're like, you don't know what's the right decision because they make it same as the decision. You can't have it both because, oh my God, you will lose years of career. Oh my God, there's someone that is going to be better than you. Oh my God, are you sure? Maybe you can't play anymore. And I love the way she was like, no. And the fact that she had her child yes. when she announced that she was having her first baby. Yes. Okay. And then she went back at it and she was still the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something that I was like, that's how you prove it. That's how you prove they're wrong. And you talk about they. Do you think about they as the media or is it more like a, a general public thing? I feel as the society. Okay. Like for me is people that are not curious about the fact that there are some rules that are not written and everyone like follows them. And I'm like, why? Like we are our own person, we have our own character, our own dreams, and why do I need to stay in this little box? I wanted to say I love seeing your social media, I love seeing you having fun. You are 24, you are so young, you. and you're still living your life. Mm -hmm. What is it that makes you most happy away from volleyball? Um, connecting with people, mm -hmm. and I love to dance. I love fashion. I love getting to know people that love to dream big. I love to be, stay inspired. This is, yes. Paola, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me and I wish you the best in all the things you do next. Thank you so much. I had an amazing time.